Qaf comments. Qaf is one of the muqatta'at, one of the letters, mysterious letters, which uh, we find in the Qur'an. If you would like to understand these letters and how they work, then you may read the appendix session of the book, or uh, alternatively, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a complete playlist with the meanings of these letters. Now, Qaf is particularly interesting because it's the beginning of the section of the Qur'an which is called As-Sujud, the submission. And the submission is a section, the last section of the Qur'an, which is to be read at night and which is supposed to uh, fortify the believers. But it's also something to which unbelievers, non-believers or believers of other things are encouraged to, to come to hear the word of God. This section of the Qur'an, beginning at chapter 50 through to the end of the Qur'an, is further divided into three subsections. So Qaf, being the letter with which the Qur'an, the word the Qur'an begins, is aptly the, the letter which introduces this chapter and is the name by, by convention of this chapter. So for more on that, see my YouTube channel or the book. To continue, by the glorious Qur'an, the truth is, they marvel that a warner has come to them from among them. Comments. The recipient of the Qur'an, as we see as we go through this chapter, is expecting destruction. This is the tradition upon which he founded his mission. We see in the Qur'an that God had mercy upon people because they, they repented. If you look at uh, the chapter uh, Fatah, or victory, we understand from that that God had mercy because people entered into the deen, into, into the doctrine in crowds, and then that became the expectation and was in fact what happened. But prior to this, the, the prophet is warning. And these applications as we go through this chapter are as relevant today as at any time. Certainly the, the characteristic sins of each of these archetypal evil societies is found in the society we have today, this world society. They're all found in this society. Muhammad was a man and if we follow the messenger we do what the messenger did. And the messenger warned, and we find in many places in the Qur'an that we are called to bear witness, to, to warn. And this is the job, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, not a religion, uh, no matter what your favourite mullah has told you, it really isn't. And um, you can expect to be somewhat uh, ridiculed if, if you take up that gauntlet, but this is the job to continue. The truth is, they marvel that a warner has come to them from among them. Then those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue say, oh, This is an amazing thing. When we are dead and are become dust, ellipsis here understood as, Are we indeed to be brought back to life? So this is an implied statement to continue. Then those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue will say, This is an amazing thing. When we are dead and are become dust, that would be an unlikely return. We know what the earth diminishes of them, and with us is a preserving decree. Comment. What we do in this life, and this is something which is borne out throughout the rest of the chapter and is returned to within the chapter, our deeds, our actions are recorded. So what we have in this life is the opportunity to invest our life in the most beneficial campaign that there is, which is serving God, or you can spend it on something else. So God has a preserving decree. To continue, the truth is, they repudiate the truth when it comes to them, so they are in a confused state. Comment, if you do reject the truth when it comes to you, and uh, to be clear, I'm talking not here about 
a religion, I'm talking about the truth. Uh, all that's left to you is a lie. And what's rather difficult at this time is that people are solipsists. That is, they basically see themselves as the centres of their own universes. And if they want something to be true, they believe it's true. And they think that opinion is the same thing as fact. And they're not. And for younger people, it's very hard given the dumbed down education however facts remain facts and I advise everyone to deal with facts and not with opinions to continue the truth is they repudiate the truth when it comes to them so they are in a confused state have they not then looked at the sky above them how we constructed it and made it fair. There are no gaps therein. And the earth we spread out and cast therein firm mountains. And we caused to grow therein every sort of delightful kind as an insight and a reminder for every repentant servant. And we sent down from the sky blessed water, then caused to grow thereby gardens and the reaped grain and tall date palms with spathes in clusters as a provision for the servants, and therewith gave we life to a dead land. Thus will be the emergence. Comment. Now in this section, God calls to witness his creation. The sky is a fact, the creation is a fact. This, the water coming down from the sky, giving life to the earth, these things are a fact, these things are designed. This is, this is evidence. This is truth. And it was designed for a purpose. The design is intrinsic to the facts that we see as a provision for the servants. And yet God brings this witness to the closing point of this Part, which is thus will be the emergence, i.e. at the end of time. All men and women, all humans will come forth from the earth in the same way God sends down water from the skies and fruits and corn and so forth come forth. These things are a, f a figure, they are a pre-shadowing of what we are all to experience. Now, this chapter is very much focused on warning, and we are now going to hear a listing of societies that were destroyed to continue. There rejected before them the people of Noh and the companions of the commencement, and Thamud, and Ad, and Firaun, and the brethren of Lut, and the companions of the woods, and the people of Tubba. Every one rejected the messengers, so my warnings became binding. Comments. This is the mechanism. A messenger or someone who will obey the imperative to bear the message to other people does that job. That's all of our jobs. And especially at this time, where we have a single world state, more or less. I mean, it's clear that that's really what's going on. That the, the way that the mechanism works is that they are warned and those people reject. Now, I want to emphasize, so my warnings became binding. All of those societies were destroyed. If you think there's another way out of this, of what we're in right now, I'd love to hear it, but there isn't, and you know it. This is the mechanism, this is the Quranic model to continue. Were we then wearied by the first creation? Yet they are in doubt about a new creation. Comments. God created this creation. God created the, the stars, the sky, the earth, as we'll see as the, the text continues, you and me, yet they are in doubt about a new creation. So are we to doubt that God will create a new creation? Should we doubt that? Of course not. The in entire 
universe of evidence supports the fact that a new creation is possible because if a new creation were not possible this creation would not exist if you're talking about building a, a thesis based upon evidence we have a world of evidence that's the evidence that the Quran in part appeals to to continue and we have created man and we know what his soul whispers to him and we are nearer to him than the jugular vein comments this refers back to what I've just said God created us and not only did he create us but he he knows exactly the absolute truth of our inner soul as is evinced in the, the next couple of verses to continue when the two learners learn seated on the right hand and on the left he utters no word save with him is a watcher ready comment we know that everything is kept and that every single thought in the deepest darkest recesses of your soul is recorded so whatever happens on judgment day this is going to be true the truth to continue and the intoxication of death will bring the truth that is what thou wast avoiding and the trumpet will be blown that is the day of warning and every soul will come with it a driver and a witness thou wast in heedlessness of this and we have removed from thee thy veil and keen is thy sight this day comment now this refers back to what has been talked about the, the learners on the left and on the right everything kept everything recorded we will enter into complete truth to continue and his intimate companion will say this is what is with me prepared comments intimate companion if you look through the references in the book you will see that this refers invariably to the shaitan now let's listen to the way that he presents to continue and his intimate companion will say this is what is with me prepared comments what what is prepared if we remember the shaitan has said i will wait for man on every on every path i will come from them to them from the from the front and the back and the left and the right he's doing his worst he's trying to take you and me to hell he's using this time this particular society the the, the whole of it this it is an idolatrous society in, in total the battle is for your soul so that he's working extremely hard so he's presenting his work to his master to continue and his intimate companion will say this is what is with me prepared comment and now it changes and the the voice is that of god and it's the the imperative cast into hell every obstinate ingrate hinderer of good skeptical transgressor who set up with god another god cast him into the severe punishment comments now we know that this judgment is true because god was witness in your innermost thoughts so what religion you professed what you claimed this is irrelevant really it's what you believed and what you did that's what the quran talks about there is no more of a religion than that those who believe in god and the last day and do good works they have their reward it isn't a complicated matter it's a matter of sincerity and action it's not a matter of quoting creeds and performing particular rituals if you wish to perform rituals fine but the ritual without the heart behind it is is meaningless to continue his intimate companion will say our lord i did not cause him to transgress but he was in profound error comment this is the shaitan divesting himself of you as we know it says elsewhere in the quran he will say i am quit of you i called you 
followed. This is the mechanism by which he makes us culpable. He calls us. And when you have been called, when you have become party to something, now it's your fault. And the intimate companion here is the shaitan. I did not cause him to transgress, but he was in profound error. This is the shaitan washing his hands of, of the people whom he led into hell. To continue, now this is God speaking. He will say, contend not in my presence when I had sent my warnings ahead to you. Comments. The contend here is the imperative plural. So it's not talking to the intimate companion and the single person that he is referring to. It's addressed to the mass of men or human beings in hell, contending amongst themselves. And there are many places in the Quran where we see that those who were followed will deny those who followed, and vice versa, and they will try to distance themselves from each other. And I believe that this is what is being referenced here. Certainly that's indicated by the use of the verb, which is in the in the plural, not in it's not a that's not a dual idea. He will say, Contend not in my presence, when I had sent my warnings ahead to you. So again, you had been warned and you became culpable. This is the mechanism. It's not about huge demonstrations and Alex Jones standing up and marching on Washington and getting lots of votes. It's not about setting up a religion and it's not about setting up a caliphate. It's not about it's about forming a community of righteous people who are pure and keep the salat, the duty, and keep zakat, purity, sexual purity, and do the job of warning. This is it. That's what makes, once the people have been warned, then the judgments of God become binding. So this is, a, you know, this is a, an echo of that. To continue, he will say, contend not in my presence when I had sent my warnings ahead to you. Comments, thus you are now guilty. And there's no question about this. Why? Because we know that the learners write down everything. In the same way as the sky has no gaps, which is an illusion which we have seen earlier in the in the chapter, in in like manner there is no gap in God's knowledge of you, of me. His judgment is true, but it becomes effective and binding and necessary when we have been warned. And this is what the al-sujud, as-sujud, these uh, last portions of the Quran, this is the purpose of them. And I will be, as I go through these, I will be forming these into playlists which follow the Quranic structure, which you can then just send to people to continue. He will say, contend not in my presence when I had sent my warnings to you. The word before me does not change. And I am not unjust to my servants. The day we say to hell, art thou full? And it will say, is there more? Comments. So when people are sent to hell, this will be completely just. I called and you followed. To continue. And the garden will be brought nigh, for those of prudent fear not far. This is what you were promised. For everyone turning in repentance, guarding, who feared the Almighty in the unseen, and came with a repentant heart, enter it in peace. That is the day of eternity. Comments. So there's the contradistinction between what those who enter the fire and what those who enter the garden have. And this is the day, or that, therlika in the Arabic, that is the day of eternity. So choose what you want. And 
if God be God, serve him. There's only a limited amount of time in this life and we are responsible for our decisions. And the truth is not an opinion. It's not something that can just be liked or disliked. It's not a voting matter. It's not a popularity contest. It's something you will have to decide for yourself and live actually for eternity with the repercussions of your decisions. I exhort you to use your life as a, an investment, the best of what you've got. Give it to God. Give it to a, a, a task that is worthy of the soul that's within you. And if you turn away, well then turn away knowing that you have been warned to continue. They have what they desire therein, and there is more with us. Comment. Whatever it is that we can even desire, God has got more than we even can conceive of wanting or desiring. Is this not worth striving for? Is this not worth fighting for? Is this not worth sacrificing for? To continue. And how many generations did we destroy before them? They were stronger than them in might, and they penetrated into the land. Had they any place of refuge? Comment. This is a rhetorical question. Had they any place of refuge? No, they hadn't. They were destroyed. And the implication is, is that this is now a similar situation. There is no refuge. There is no safety but in communication of God and his message. There is none. And when the warnings begin, when people get this, do the job and warn people, mainly the elite, but other people as well, those people are now culpable. Culpable. It's like having your rights read to you. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to a lawyer. If you don't have a lawyer, one will be appointed to you by the state, etc., 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 once that thing has been said to you, you've heard that, you are, you've now been served with notice. You have entered a different um, legal status to continue. In that is a reminder for him who has a heart or gives ear with a conscious mind. And we created the heavens and the earth and what is between them in six days. And there touched us no weariness. Then be thou patient over what they say, and give thou glory with the praise of thy Lord before the appearance of the sun, and before its departure, and some of the night glorify thou him, and at the ends of the submission. Comments. There is a reference or an appeal to the creation of the heavens and the earth. Every single molecule which makes up your physical body and your ear, the minds and the electronic impulses which are which comprise your thoughts, they're all obeying laws. Laws which were defined, created and are maintained by the creator of the heavens and the earth. So you're drowning in evidence. And then there is a, an appeal, quote, Then be thou patient over what they say, end quote. This job requires patience. And... I contend that you and I are called to this job and we will and do hear a lot of things that, which are unpleasant to hear but you have a heavens and earth of evidence and they have if they've rejected the truth then they are in confusion there is a difference between truth and not truth and it's not a matter of opinion to continue with my comments of this part quote and give thou glory with the praise of thy Lord before the appearance of the sun and before its departure, and some of the night glorify thou him, and at the ends of the submission. End quote. Now, what glorifying God is, I think, is something that people can work out for themselves. I'm not going to talk here about particular ideas and notions about what prayer may or may not be at this point. But what I am going to say is that at the ends of the submission, as sujud, 
I refer you to the notes and the appendix section of my book for the work that I have done on the muqatta'at or the mysterious letters which you can find on my YouTube channel uh, as a separate playlist and also in the book which you can download for free or buy if you wish. This is one of the times the submission as sujood when one is to give glory to God. I would claim, I would assert that this is at the end of this as sujood, this period of reading the Quran at which other believers but other people also are present and at which they can they can make their determination and I'll get to the this very important word when we we get into al qadr and uh, layl al qadr and this is the, very very crucial because this is what it's about it's about inviting people to come to a determination one way or another for the creator of the heavens and the earth and the veracity of the quran it does not mean that if someone does not follow the Qur'an that they are damned. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, is if they do not believe in God alone and turn away from sin and do good and righteous acts after this, that they are culpable. They're culpable in a different way. They're culpable in a way that they were not culpable before. Just as somebody who becomes of age is in a different legal status before the law or someone who's had their rights read to them by an officer of the law they are in a different legal status so someone who has heard a sujood who has listened to the witness of these parts of the Quran explained to them is now in a different legal status now does this mean that somebody who is a practicing Jew who is observing the Torah who is doing righteous works who is keeping the solah, he's keeping his duty, and he's also keeping zakah, he's sexually continent, except with his, those who, to whom he has a, a legal right. And if you would like to understand why those things mean those things, I refer you to the, the, the larger body of my work, then he's righteous. The Quran does not require that anyone adopt actually any religion and certainly not the religion of quote-unquote Islam you won't find the religion of Islam in the Quran what I am saying is is that it's God who guides that's the Quranic message whom God guides he is guided that's the message and this calls people to turn to God not to turn to a mullah and certainly not to turn to me but to turn to guidance and to turn to God for guidance so this is a, a clarion call for the soul and this is the job of those who believe in God and the last day and who follow the Quran and wish to follow the prophet who brought the Quran from God because this is what this prophet did. So this is the job. This is the job description. So I'm just laying that out for you to continue. And listen thou for the day the crier will cry from a place nearby. The day they will hear the blast aright. That is the day of emergence. And we give life, and we give death, and to us is the journey's end. The day the earth is rent asunder from about them rapidly, that gathering is easy for us. We know best what they say. Comments. The expectation, again, in the time of the prophet was destruction, and it was only that the people clearly repented that God held back and in my opinion and I don't have any special knowledge but I'm showing my personal opinion I personally believe that this is the time of the end or certainly if it's not it will mean that the elite the ruling elite is going to have to repent and take the society with it the society people just follow they are just automata more or less if you see the the, the Quranic methodology it's always going to the elite they don't go to the mass of people because the mass of people do whatever the cult they live within tells them to do and that's what people do today nothing has changed and i'm just embracing and understanding that reality but the message is apocalyptic certainly in the terms of cities who which were destroyed in a way, and it's it's an awful phrase, but a global village. I mean, it's I don't 
have an awful lot of affection for that term for many reasons. But the idea that the world is now one kind of community, I think we can agree that that's happened. So when one warns now, we're really dealing with the world. We're not dealing with Ad or Thamud or Firaun or these you know, sort of discrete, localized communities. We're dealing with the entire world now. The Quran is telling us that this is going to happen, that there will be a blast and there will be the day, or what it calls the day of emergence. And this is going to be cataclysmic. To quote, the day the earth is rent from about them rapidly. End quote. To continue, that gathering is easy for us. We know best what they say. Comment. Now this refers back to one of the recurrent themes within the, the chapter, which is that the learners, they know everything, they write everything down. So whatever hurt one experiences from false accusations or from insults, we know best what they say. And now we, we move into the concluding statement. And thou art not a tyrant over them. Comment. It's not the place of anyone who picks up this gauntlet to make people believe. You can't make people believe. As we'll see, is, is God willing, we continue with this, with this uh, exposition and through our other parts of the Quran we see over and over that actually you can only bring this message to people who already believe. The, the, the condition of believing is a condition of soul. And you know, people do change, some people do change, and some people do um, do repent. That certainly happens. But, you know, you can't make anybody believe anything. And in fact, to try to is an anti-Quranic position. So, to continue. And thou art not a tyrant over them. Remind thou with the Quran, him who fears my warnings. Comment. This really confirms what I've just said. So you can only really remind with the Quran to some degree who already fears God. Because Alladina Kafiru, as we know from my exposition of this and the Quranic definitions, these are people who are heedless of warning. They they don't care about any sort of warning. They don't care about hell or what happens after the death or any of these things. They're indifferent to these things. They're indifferent to warning. There are many people who are not indifferent to warning, but who have not heard this message. And these are the people that we're looking for. And this section of the Quran, this end section, is geared toward, it is really the, the, the missionary's handbook. It's the, the part that we are to use to take our message to those people and for them to make a determination on how they want to spend their lives and where they see their best interests. That concludes this section of the comments and exposition.